Good evening, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the 2013 College of Natural Sciences Hall of Honors celebration. I'm Linda Hickey, I'm the Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and I wanna again welcome you all and thank you for being here tonight. Each year the College of Natural Sciences comes together to acknowledge members of our community who have distinguished themselves through their careers, their efforts to improve society and their efforts to support the college and, their imp and its impact on science and mathematics. The people we honor at this occasion every year are former university leaders, alumni, and folks who've really been consistent stalwart supporters of the college and its mission. As you all know, the, the um, core mission of the University of Texas at Austin's is to transform society, lives for the benefit of society. And to achieve that goal, we rely on the creativity, the persistence, the intelligence, the dedication of all of the people sitting in this room tonight who play different roles in, in helping and supporting the college. For more than two decades, this college has been celebrating the leaders among us here tonight and others who have helped make the university and the college stronger, and in doing so have transformed a number of student, countless student lives um, in helping them earn their degrees and have helped society at large by making very impactful world-changing discoveries through, through their research. More than 50 members, our, our, our individuals, our members of all Hall of Honor societies um, that, that we have been uh, celebrating for the last several decades. And tonight we're here to add another member to celebrate and honor our newest member, Marianne Rankin, who is the former Dean of the College of Natural Sciences. Before we get started on our formal, too much into more into our formal program, there's a several special guests here with this evening that I'd like to introduce. Uh, former Dean Bob Boyer, also a former Dean of the College of Natural Sciences. I don't know where Bob is. Um, there he is. Good, thank you. Uh, where's David Loudy? He had, oh no, okay, well, David was here. He honored us with his presence for a short while. He's the former interim dean, as all of you know, who's now senior vice provost for enrollment and graduation management. <laughs> David in absentia. We're also um, very pleased to be joined tonight by a few other of UT's deans and other administrators. Dr. Larry Abram, interim dean, School of Undergraduate Studies. Where are you, Larry? Uh, but over in the far corner here. <laughs> Dr. Sharon Mosier, Dean of the Jackson School of Geosciences. Sharon's right here. <laughs> and I believe Juan, Dr. Juan Sanchez, who's the Vice President for Research, is also here. Is that true? Maybe not. Okay. Um, well, at least David here was here for a little while. Okay, some of the past Hall of Honor awardees here are also in attendance. We're very pleased to have them this evening. I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize these folks, and if you could stand as I call your name, but if everybody could hold your applause till the very end, um, there's, there's quite a crowd of them, so we're very pleased to have this long list. Mr. Tom Baker. Where's Tom? There he is, right here. No applause yet. <laughs> Regent Jim Dannenbaum. Jim is back here. President Larry Faulkner. Larry. Uh, President Peter Flan. Peter's right here. And next to Peter is Mrs. Priscilla Flan. <laughs> That's okay, she's right here in the front. She can wave her hand. Susie Jastro, right here in front. Susie's here. Retired Admiral Weldon Koenig. Where are you, Weldon? Right here, middle, right in the middle. Mr. Harry Lucas, right in the back. Ms. Sarah Martinez Tucker, also in the front table here. Sarah, thank you. Mr. Bob O'Rear. 
Bob is right here. Jim Prentice, Dr. Jim Prentice. Jim is right here. Mrs. Sonia Wilson. Sonia is right here. Couldn't see you there for a second. And Dr. Matt Winkler. Here's Matt. Let's give a round of applause to all these former Hall of Honor nominees and current members of the Hall of Honor. And again, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening, too. It's going to, it's going to be a great evening. Um, we're also honored by the president of uh, presence, sorry, of our provost here this evening, and he honors both the College of Natural Sciences and, and Mary Ann. Steve Leslie joined UT Austin in 1974 as an assistant professor of pharmacy. He has performed world-renowned research in alcoholism and alcohol abuse. Steve has served as provost since 2007, before which we, he was dean of the College of Pharmacy. And Steve, we want to thank you for all you've done for the College of Natural Sciences. I very much in the college very much appreciate your support. And thank you being, for being here this evening and being willing to make some remarks. So if you come on up. Thank you very much, Linda. What a privilege to be here. So, you know, talking about a long time ago, let me, uh, let me say hi to Bob Boyer back there. And uh, Bob, you and I go way back, and back in the 80s, you know, I had the privilege of being the inaugural director of the Institute for Neuroscience, and Bob Boyer was fabulous in terms of supporting the start of that. And, uh, you know, just with everything that goes on in natural sciences, natural sciences recognizes excellence and gets behind it and supports it. <clears throat> and that was one that I think happened a long, long time ago with Bob Boyer. So Bob, uh, great to be here. Let me first start by saying what a privilege it is to be here and, and what a privilege it's been to serve, be, uh, to serve as provost over these last six years. And, and uh, of course, I knew as a, a colleague, a decanal colleague with Mary Ann, uh, how, how strong natural sciences was, uh, but, you know, seeing it as a provost and really getting into it and working with the dean and, and knowing firsthand, uh, you know, how tightly focused the entire college and, and the support from wonderful people. And look at this room filled with people who have really contributed so much to make the College of Natural Sciences what it is, but to see firsthand what all the elements are to really create and sustain and grow excellence was uh, quite a privilege over that time. And, and of course, we're, I'm here just to start the process of recognizing our fabulous former, former dean, Mary Ann Rankin, and, uh, and just to say what, what you already know, and, and that she is a very, very special person. Uh, she is a uh, person who worked tirelessly as the dean for, was it 17 years, Marianne? Is that what it was, 17 years? Short one month. Short one month. Well, we'll count it 17. One month doesn't really count for that much. Uh, but she was really special over the entire course of the 17-year period where she was a, focused in, in relentless ways on the pursuit of, of excellence. She was a very strong leader. And, and in many ways, very bold and innovative uh, and, and highly creative in terms of the kinds of things that she did. She was a, a, a tireless transformer of the college. She started new programs. She was persistent in the focus of making sure that she uh, supported the growth of, of new facilities that she knew would be the foundations for the support of the recruitment of top tier faculty. And, and we have those top tier faculty here. And, and, uh, and, and she never compromised on, on, the, on, on quality. She always focused on making sure that if she was going to get engaged in a recruitment process for faculty, that it was gonna be excellence and nothing, nothing short of that. So, uh, so it was really a privilege to, to work with her. Of course, she worked on many other things. Uh, you know, I, I loved her focus on research and scholarship and the foundation she always set for that and the big scale of the job that she had as she worked to continue to build upon the kind of the long-term excellence of the College of Natural Sciences. But she also was a power in education. I mean, she 
I don't have to tell you how she did. She, you, we all know that the nation knows what she did as the foundational leader to, for the start of you teach. And Marianne, you know, what you did to start the freshman research in the initiative and to show firsthand how you could take uh, a research environment and take young men and women who needed individual attention and put them in a, a challenging environment and not only have a, a transformative effect on their education, but also on their social adjustment to the university. It was a really powerful thing, and I'll, I will always remember those early times when we talked about that program that you got funded from the National Science Foundation to do. Through it all, again, you know, I said it before, but through it all, she had an uncompromising focus on, on excellence. You know, I got to know Marianne. I'm going to quit in just a second. I, I just have a few minutes. I know we're going to eat, but I've got a chance to. I loved working with her. Uh, you know, when, back uh, in uh, the late 90s, you know, when I was thinking about going into administration, there were just a couple of people that I sought advice from, and Marianne Rankin was, was one of those. I, I remember the luncheon we had and the advice you gave me, and so, so if you kind of like what, what I've done, then, then she's responsible. If you don't like it, then you could hold her accountable. So. <laughs> uh, but Marianne, you know, it is, is, is such a privilege for me to be here tonight to honor, to be a part of, of honoring you. You are the real deal. You really know what it means to support, to grow, to sustain, to, to build upon excellence. And, uh, you know, you were, you were a great dean, and I happen to know you're a great provost at that University of Maryland. So congratulations to you tonight for being inducted into the Hall of Honor of this great college. And let me say that though all that you've done to build excellence set the foundations for us to have another fabulous dean, Linda Hickey. So let's give a round of applause for our new dean, Linda Hickey. So, yeah. She is a pleasure to work with. So, you know, here we are celebrating you tonight, but next steps is to build upon the excellence that you have created here, and we have a great new dean to do that. Linda, thank you very much for the invitation to be here tonight. It's a real privilege. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve. Okay, I clearly have a tough act to follow. Um, <laughs> so I'll try to live up to that. But in the meantime, um, now's the time to enjoy your dinner. Uh, please visit for a while. And after dinner, or after we've gotten started, after a little while, we'll continue our program um, in honoring Marianne. So enjoy. Okay, everybody, we're going to start the re resume the program after dinner now. That was quick. Thank you. Um, as you all know, we're here to honor and recognize the many and significant accomplishments of Marianne Rankin and her contributions to the College of Natural Sciences. Um, we have quite an ensemble cast here to celebrate Marianne and, and her life and her contributions. And I'd like to introduce each of the people who's going to be up here on the stage and then ask them all to join, join us up here on stage. So first, um, we're very pleased to have Ms. Ann Thompson, Marianne's daughter, here tonight. Anne graduated, you can come on up now if you want. Anne graduated summa cum laude from NYU with a degree in English. Two, sci two, two, two scientist parents, and look what happened. <coughs> God bless Anne. <laughs> oh, yeah, our, our resident liberal arts guy. Okay. Um, not only did she graduate with English, but she received a master's degree in Irish studies from the National University of Ireland at Galway. Um, Anne is currently living on the Irish speaking island of Inisir. Inisir? I don't speak um, the language very well. She's working there. She's working on a postgraduate degree in Irish folklore studies and research on the Irish language. That's truly unique. That's great. She'll be applying to PhD programs this fall. So, thank you for being here, Anne. Next, we have Dr. Peter Flan, President Emeritus of the University of Texas at Austin. And as Peter makes his way up here, as many of you know, Peter is an honorary life member of the uh, Advisory Council of the College of Natural Sciences, and he's a member also of our Hall of Honor. Dr. Flan is a National Academy of Engineering member, 
He served the UT system in many administrative capacities, including president of UT Austin, president of UT San Antonio, UT Austin executive vice president, and director of the Bureau of Economic Geology. Thank you, Peter. Next, we have Dr. Larry Gilbert. Where's Larry? There he is. Come on up, Larry. Who is a professor of integrative biology in the college and director of the Brackenridge Field Lab. Larry himself is an alumnus of the University of Texas at Austin, and he was named the D Distinguished Texas Scientist, one of the Distinguished Texas Scientists by the Texas Academy of Science in 2012. Thank you for coming, Larry. And finally, we have Ms. Sarah Martinez Tucker, also an alumna of the University of Texas at Austin. Ms. Tucker is a former undersecretary at the US Department of Education. She was nominated to that position, the nation's top, high, top higher education official, by President George W. Bush and confirmed by the Senate. As undersecretary, she oversaw policies, programs, and activities related to post-secondary education vocational and adult education, and federal student aid. Ms. Tucker is the newly appointed CEO of the National Math and Science Initiative. Sarah is a Hall of Honor awardee also, and a former member of the College of Natural Sciences Advisory Council. So if Sarah, if you'd join us on stage here. I want to thank all of you for agreeing to share your stories with us tonight. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. So Sarah, if you could take over now, that'd be great. Well, thanks, Linda, very much. It is such a treat for me to be back with the Natural Sciences Advisory Council. I truly have missed being with you. But I think, um, as, as I flew today, I sat next to James Huffine. Some of you know that James was um, formerly the chairman of the Board of Regents. And when I told him why I was coming to Austin, he said, oh my god, Mary Ann Rankin. I had wanted to be there so badly. And I said, the chairman of the Board of Regents, Mary Ann Rankin, and he said, are you kidding? Do you know what she got done? And I, Mary, Mary Ann, I, just, I told him I would say that. And I also know that everybody in this room has a wonderful story to, to, to say about you. And I hope that tonight that you feel the love, the respect, the admiration of everybody. And I know that they all have a story to tell. And I'm privileged to be able to share the stage tonight with a few people who will tell their stories about Mary Ann Rankin. Let me start by, by mentioning that, um, Mar that, that uh, Anne may have skipped a generation. Mary Ann is the eldest of five siblings from Gary, Indiana. Mary Ann grew up in a very musically inclined family. Her father, Edward Richmond, um, was a professor of music. And her mother, Anne McIsaac, was a very accomplished opera singer. Mary Ann would be the first to say that there was a lot of singing, a lot of music in her house. But she would also be the first to say that her siblings were the ones that really caught the, the bug. And, and I do want to acknowledge, if some of you listened and were um, humming to the music that you heard during dessert, that was music by the Richmond brothers. Mary Ann's brothers, Jim, Ed, and Don, were the ones that were singing. Mary Ann loved the music. She really did love the music, but she liked to say she was good at science. I think good would prove to be the understatement of a lifetime. Mary Ann earned her bachelor's degree in biology and chemistry from LSU, Louisiana State University. Following that, um, she was a National Science Foundation fellow at uh, the University of Iowa, and let me see if I can remember this right, Imperial College Field Station in Ascot, England. Um, she was a pre-doctoral fellow with the National Science Foundation. She then went and earned her doctorate in physiology and behavior at the University of Iowa, and then proceeded to go to Harvard, where she was a fellow from the National Institutes of Health. And then fortunately for us, in 1975, there was an opening at the zoology department at the University of Texas at Austin. Well, I, as the junior member of the search committee for a new position in zoology, um, I was designated to pick up Mary Ann and the other candidates as they arrived. Uh, I was uh, keen on this one because she worked on insects, which I work on. 
Uh, to set the stage, um, over half of the graduate student co cohort that I had been with at Stanford were women and the better half, I might add. Um, so hiring a female zoologist was not unremarkable. Um, however, our older zoology colleagues had been heard to remark, we hired a woman once and it didn't work out. <laughs> Uh, Marianne's flight was early, and as usual, I was a bit late. Um, the baggage claim area was empty. Uh, I looked around, there were very few people in there, but there was this one woman at the information desk uh, that kind of violated my biased vision of female biologists. Uh, she looked like she had just stepped out of the cover of Vogue magazine. Um, I think I said, uh-oh. Um, Mary Ann specializes and specialized in the part of insect physiology that explains things like the decision to reproduce or the decision to migrate in, in migratory insects like milkweed bugs and grasshoppers and very important um, agricultural area. Um, I might add that I think one reason I'm guessing that she didn't stick long enough in, in, in that part of biology is that our group in reproductive physiology were all vertebrate guys and they really, in my opinion, never welcomed, welcomed her into that broader vision of reproductive biology, but that's a guess. Her students enjoyed a great family atmosphere, lab meetings, good food, and so forth. That's the reports I got. I was never invited to have some of that food or be in the lab meeting. Um, and to this day, many of her students retain her class notes and consider those to be really super uh, works of uh, rigor and thoughtfulness um, and have said I, it could have been a book. After uh, Marianne gained the rank of associate professor and before I could convince her to collaborate with me on the insects I work with, which are decidedly non-migratory and could have been a good comparative system, she was already moving into kind of administrative duties. Um, in 1981 to 83, she became an intern and then assistant dean during Dean Robert Boyer's term. And then from 89 to 94, she took over the, the uh, Division of Biological Sciences which was the unit that helped uh, organize and coordinate undergraduate teaching um, for the separate biology departments, which are zoology, botany, and microbiology. Um, and we have now that perhaps coming back, and Janice Fisher is going to be running that, so uh, kind of full turn. Uh, maybe Janice will be a dean sometime. Um, One of the things that I noticed when she took over was an immediate improvement in one of the courses that I had been teaching. Um, and it was evident that she had a clear mission to improve undergraduate teaching. And that ambition later bloomed as she innovated with the You Teach initiative. I first met uh, Marianne Rankin when she asked me for advice on whether she should accept the deanship of the College of Natural Sciences. I think that was in 1994. Uh, I had appointed Dean Boyer, her predecessor. I think she'd already made up her mind and she was just touching bases. Uh, after uh, our conversation over lunch, she was my choice. A few years later, I was back as interim president and Dean Rankin reported to me. Early on, we flew out to a meeting of the McDonald Observatory Advisory Council. And in those hours in a little plane flying over West Texas, we became friends. For most of Mary Ann's long and successful tenure as dean, we were involved together in various projects and we met at university functions and meetings 
and of course we were associated through my membership uh, on the college in the College of Natural Sciences Advisory Council. The way she organized and employed the council in support of the college is, in my opinion, a model for how other schools and colleges should do it. And over the years, she talked to me about other opportunities that uh, came her way, whether she should accept the presidency of the University of Maine, should she accept the opportunity to lead the National Math and Science Initiative, or NIMSI, and finally, should she go to Maryland as provost? What is her legacy here at the University of Texas at Austin? Some accomplishments have already been mentioned. The successful development of UTeach that led to the NIMSI opportunity. The nanoscience program and the Faulkner building. The Hackerman building the Bill and Melinda Gates Computer Science Complex, the Freshman Research Initiative, the creation of the School of Human Ecology, and early in her tenure, the reorganization of the college to combine traditional departments into the Division of Biological Sciences. And as I remember, that wasn't easy. Uh, the academic bureaucracy is very refractive. Uh, <laughs> others might select other accomplishments, and there have been many. She was very much involved in the Jackson gift, and there's not many people that know that. Uh, we made a number of trips to Dallas to meet with Jack Jackson, and he was very fond of her. And then, of course, as has been mentioned, there are the faculty stars that she has uh, recruited. I can't think of anyone who is more qualified to be recognized in the Hall of Honor. So um, I was asked tonight to speak about my mother's leadership qualities. And I have to say that I never viewed my mother as a leader. I just viewed her as my mother. Um, but looking back, I can see that her leadership qualities and her time at the university have had a really vast and wonderful impact on my life. Um, and growing up in my mom's office really made this whole university my family. And um, I have to say, oh, I love these pictures. <laughs> That's me. Um, <laughs> so. Um, Interacting with the professors, the staff, and the advisory council uh, was a major part of my childhood. And um, it gave me this huge group of people that are like surrogate aunts and uncles. And um, it's been so good to see you all here tonight. Um, we traveled together to places like the Butterflies in Mexico and McDonald Observatory in West Texas. And um, I'm so sorry. I really grew up in this community that, um, that my mother nourished. I only really, <laughs> I only learned much later after I, um, after I entered graduate school that um, universities have cliques and rivalries and, um, you know, these, these problems and resentments and that being a dean can be a hard and thankless job. And um, so, you know, this, this community was really a home for me and it didn't feel like that at all. I, I never could have seen those things. Um, so in addition to, to this, um, the university's problems really became my mom's problems when, when we were um, living in this, in this community. <clears throat> and sometimes they became our whole family's problems. I think my father would agree. Um, for example, 
There was a period of several years where Welsh Hall experienced um, a series of severe fires and accidents, and it was very scary. They, they had them right in a row. And um, my mom felt every single one of those fires. She, she really internalized it as a personal responsibility. And I think she still gets hives of anxiety when she hears, <laughs> when she hears um, sirens, the sound of a fire engine on campus. And um, so for years after these fires, my mom and I would be driving, often on the other side of the city from uh, the university, and we would hear a fire engine. And the first thing out of her mouth would be, oh God, I hope it isn't Welsh Hall. <laughs> <laughs> February 24th, 1980, it never occurred to me that it would take 14 years for me to come back to Texas. It also, I, I would have never guessed that what brought me back to Texas was a call from Rom Rome, who asked me whether I'd consider joining the advisory council at the College of Natural Sciences. And I said, Rom, I, I think you might be confused. I got my undergraduate in journalism, so I'm a member of the College of Communications family, and I got my MBA, so I'm a member of the, at that time, business school. And he said, no, Dean Boyer has, has, has a vision, and uh, we'd like to ask you to consider coming back. Well, by the time you guys considered my nomination, by the time you elected me, Dean Boyer had retired, and so my first meeting in 1994 was Mary Ann's first meeting at the College of Natural Sciences. And my first impression was this was somebody who took herself really seriously. <laughs> she was very focused. She had an agenda for us, and she managed that agenda tight. What I got to know, though, my colleagues on the stage have described a lot of Mary Ann's attributes. And Dr. Flan talked about that advisory council and, and, and how, how that advisory council really was a model for, for others. And as I re-engaged with, with this campus, I reflect back now and I think how brilliant Marianne was in crafting our agendas. Every meeting, she would open by telling us issues that were plaguing her. And then we'd break up into subgroups and she would ask us for advice. So we had a moment where we could think to ourselves, what is the dean struggling with and what can we do to give her the best advice? She always made sure that students and that faculty presented to us. On the flight down today, I remember that one of the speeches that I, or the presentations that I remembered most was a presentation that we had in the advisory council on why as we get older, it's easy for us to remember the things that happened 30 years ago, but we can't remember what happened yesterday. And I thought, well, this makes sense. And I was embarrassed that on the flight here, I'm now officially old, I couldn't remember what the reason was. <laughs> and then we always had those kickoff dinners to get us started. And as, as Anne talked about family and nourishment, as Dr. Flan talked about working hard and all of her accomplishments, as Dr. Gilbert talked about her intellect, I sat back and I thought Mary Ann had a unique way for making sure that each and every one of us came to those advisory council meetings and left knowing that we'd helped our alma mater in some way, that we learned something that made us even prouder that UT was our alma mater, and that we had fun and became a families in advisory council. So tonight, Marianne, what I want to say to you is thank you for bringing me home. More importantly, thank you for helping me fall in love with my alma mater all over again. One of the things that Marianne brought into the college was the neurosciences. And uh, I'm, I'm ad living this one. But that's the, the group that helps you distinguish being hard of hearing from short-term memory loss. <laughs> um, just in case you are worried about it. Here. So once she went up to the dean, it's like going to a different planet, right? And uh, so her old colleagues and friends don't get the same interaction anymore. But her office was close enough to mine on the fourth floor that I often knew when the dean was present because she'd come out of the elevator and there'd be this rapid clicking down the hall of high heels to the fastest walk I've ever heard in my life. 
uh, getting to her lab, which was playtime. Um, and she was fortunate to have a former graduate student and lab manager, Tina Taub, keeping the lab running while she ran the bigger show. Uh, between the two of them, they kept the grants, uh, the flow of grant funding coming and postdocs and graduate students going until the end of her days at UT. Um, I think her old colleagues in, in zoology and in integrative biology tried the, our best not to bother her, as we could see that her focus was on the broader issues of, of college and natural sciences. Um, and really, we didn't always agree with her, but we really uh, respected her willingness to listen and her um, honesty and integrity. Um, instead, uh, in, indeed, one of my colleagues who finds it difficult to trust anyone asked Dean Rankin to handle his bank account while he was in the middle of Australia for a year. <laughs> and I can guarantee you that guy doesn't trust anybody. <laughs> uh, we all respected her leadership and her willingness to taste, take risk and fight for the things that she saw to be good for the college and the university. As a case in point, her willingness to help us with Brackenridge Field Laboratory for future generations remains a high point for me personally. I'm very glad we had the wisdom to hire Marianne Rankin and the good fortune to have, to have her accept both the faculty position and later the deanship, which is really a personal service that most of us would not be willing to undertake. We would not want to give up our playtime. Um, in retrospect, I see now that the job candidate I picked up at Mueller Airport 39 years ago wasn't dressed like a fashion model, but like a CEO, because that's what she became, no matter how many other talents and careers were possible for this remarkable person. And instead of being a stay-at-home mom, her offspring was a stay-at-the-lab or office daughter. Uh, this experiment worked very well. I think. You even look like your mother. Uh, welcome back, Marianne, so we can say welcome to the Hall of Honor. My part of this uh, program is already over, but I want to remind you all Marianne's not through. She's taken on a very big job, as Steve Leslie can attest. And she's got to learn all about a big new university. So she's going to be a very busy person. And I hope this evening is uh, something she can take with her. Go ahead. So um, <clears throat> one thing I noticed while growing up and spending countless hours sitting at mom's desk doing my homework or um, playing in her lab um, was that it was a positive and hardworking environment full of possibilities. Um, my mother created that environment and she created a college that could feel like home to a 10-year-old girl. And um, even though throughout my childhood I I spent a lot of time barging into my mom's meetings. I, I can't say that I ever paid that much attention to the content of those meetings. And I can't talk about the programs that she created or the people that she hired. But I can say that she saw the university and the people in it as something akin to a very large extended family. And um, she taught me to see it that way too. When I started um, speaking with you this evening, I mentioned James Huff Hines and others that are not in the room tonight that wish they could be here to just celebrate the contributions of Mary Ann Rankin. In closing, I want to give a voice to a group that, that really matters, but doesn't yet know how to say thank you to Mary Ann Rankin. You teach is currently on 35 campuses. We're adding 10 more in the next year. These 45 campuses are going to produce 10,225 teachers who all love math and science and are experts in math and science. Rough estimates are that they will reach 4 million young minds 
that need to be shaped for the future of our country. If, if you remember Dr. Flan, Flan mentioning that academia resists change, already we know that the combination of Mary Ann's leadership, her CEO-like smarts, her hard work, her nourishing, her caring, made you teach possible. But when the legislature decided that they needed to get involved in the admissions process at the University of Texas at Austin, I don't know that the legislature knew how many conversations would get started. Conversations between UT and the legislators, conversations across this campus, conversations across the alumni base, the donor base. And as all those conversations were taking place, valedictorians, salutatorians, top 10 percenters from across the state were enrolling at UT Austin with the confidence of knowing that they were achievers because their class rank had told them so. But we knew that they had never seen a rigorous academic curriculum until they showed up on this campus. While all those conversations were taking place, I'd like to think that the combination of the leadership, the CEO smarts, the political savvy, the nourishment, the care, the love of the laboratory, instead inspired a different set of conversations within the College of Natural Sciences. And those of you that were with me at the Natural Sciences in, in the 90s will remember conversations like, what would happen if these students in the roughest courses were in smaller classes and had access to the top faculty? What could happen if we had these freshmen involved in research at a very young age? PENS, the Partnership to Enhance Natural Sciences, which is now TIP, the Freshman Research Group, the Freshman Research Initiative, I'm sorry, the FIGS, all of those started. And so while we celebrate Mary Ann tonight, all those attributes that I've mentioned before, I'd like to join Ann and Dr. Flan and Dr. Gilbert in acknowledging something else that really matters, and that's the heart that you have in recognizing and respecting the dignity of students who came here with confidence and were able to hold on to that confidence. Years later, when I was a member of the Commission of 125, we looked at data on what happened to those top 10 percenters. And the results were amazing. And I'll never forget Larry Faulkner very quietly making one statement that, was, that I will always remember Larry's face when he said it. And he said, you see, what we need to talk about is high achievers will always find a way to make their way to the top. We'll never know if those young minds that came to Austin in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, ever, ever came to realize that they were less than when they got to this campus. But here's what we do know, Marianne, because of that heart of yours that saw through their need to have their dignity respected. These, these young minds have succeeded and they're making a positive difference. And so I just would like to join Dr. Gilbert, Dr. Flan, and Anne and saying that while we celebrate everything else, I want to give a voice to all those young minds that have a future because of your vision. Thank you so much. So thank you, Peter, Larry, Anne, and Sarah. I think this is a great time now to invite Marianne up to the stage and welcome her as our newest member of the Hall of Honor in the College of Natural Sciences.
This is really been overwhelming. Thank you. I think I am the luckiest person in the world um, to have been given the privilege of working with all of you to accomplish all these things you give me credit for. It's been a joy. Um, in many ways, the most fun thing I've ever done. And the greatest privilege uh, of my life to serve as dean here. And to, I, I want to say thank you to all of you for helping achieve these things that, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I really was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, in the audience are lots of folks I worked with in the dean's office and chairman, former chairman of departments that worked with me to do lots of important things for the college. And I would just like to ask you all to stand. And, and, and I would like to say thank you to you for what you did to help make these things possible. So would you all just stand up and let's say thank you to all these folks. I had such a good team, and, and one of my key team members is standing right back there, and I know she's responsible for this evening, Janice. Thank you. She was such a, an amazing support for me in every way, and I don't think I was a very, uh, easy person to support <laughs> many times. So um, another person that really um, was an incredible help to me, um, Larry mentioned, Tina Taub Montemeyer. T Tina, please, would you stand? Tina kept my lab going for all these years. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I used to get a lot of credit for still having a lab while I was dean. Well, the reason I did it was because of Tina. And her sister, Toby Taub, kept me from turning into jello. <laughs> Toby's great friend and trainer for me over many years, just fabulous um, support. And another person. Um, who was incredibly important through all of what we did was Wesley Thompson, who could, who could, who couldn't have been a more generous support uh, from taking responsibility for Annie to household stuff to just helping me in every way think through problems and help write grant proposals and not get too upset about things that were going on that I was worried about. And I, I think the college owes Wes as much as, as many thanks as, as to me, not that you owe me any, but anyway, please say thank you to Wes for me. <laughs> and you know, um, anybody in a sort of in the dean's position, which 
Dr. Flan told me once was um, that I had to understand that it was a middle management position. And in fact, <laughs> that was actually, he gave me so much good advice over the years, and this sort of no-nonsense perspective. But he, but in, in a position like that, having the right leaders above you is almost more important than anything else in getting things accomplished that you feel are important, getting programs started, getting buildings built, you name it. And I had really wonderful leaders through the years that I was dean. And one person who I think was especially important in getting all kinds of things done from the PENS program, which turned into TIP, to you teach and FRI and um, getting uh, neuroscience underway, and I could just go on and on with Sheldon Eckel Nelson. Sheldon. Thank you. And another person who isn't here tonight, who I owe a great deal to for advice and counsel over the years, I would go to him um, time and again just to, again, just ask his opinion or his help. Um, and I still just, I miss him all the time. And that's Norm Hackerman. And his daughter Katie's here tonight. Katie, would you stand? gone, I don't know, they may have left, she was here earlier. I really uh, want to say again what a privilege it was to have played this role. It was, um, I feel like I get all kinds of credit like this from you all and thanks. And it should just be the other way around. I thank you all for letting me participate in these things and for helping me. And especially you all from the Advisory Council. I don't know if you realize how much you did to help me grow up and get brave and understand how some of the things work in the outside world and, and take programs to the outside world like you teach, uh, if it hadn't been for the you teach task force, Andrew Greenwald and and Harry Lucas and all the other wonderful folks who served on that, I would never have had the nerve to go to Washington and try to sell this program. And one person who really helped me with that was Larry Faulkner, who again I went to for advice many times and who was an incredible leader and role model for me. And uh, I just want to thank you, Larry, for your leadership and guidance through all these things. So Larry, would you say? <laughs> Now that I'm at the University of Maryland, I'm using some of the things that I learned here. It turns out at Maryland, they really don't know quite how to do, uh, how to connect with the outside world through advisory councils like we do here. And I'm trying to help the, other, the deans um, learn how to, to have groups like this one that can help guide the colleges and guide the university to create partnerships and opportunities and raise money and raise, raise visibility and do wonderful things. And I feel like I, I, I can do that because of you all and what you helped me understand. They also don't have some of our wonderful programs like you teach and freshman research initiative. So I'm hoping that we can get those established and 
maybe we can be the first replication site for FRI and the 36th for you teach, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I've probably gone on long enough. I, I really just have to say again, thank you so much for the privilege of being Dean and for this incredible tribute tonight. It, it, I will treasure it always. I, I just am totally overwhelmed. Thank you all for all the wonderful things you said. Thank you, Annie, for being there in the office, <laughs> making it possible for me to be a mother and a dean at the same time. And thank you, Wes, for making that happen, too. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Um, we have one more order of business tonight. Um, I'm going to ask Jim Prentice to come to the stage. Jim, if you can come up. Um, as many of you know, Jim is an honorary life member of the Foundation Advisory Council. He served the college in, in many different ways um, as during his very long tenure um, as Advisory Council member. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about that at this time. Um, and we're very, very grateful for you to be here, Jim. Mary Ann, where are you? There you are. Everyone here tonight came to honor you because of our continuing admiration and respect and affection for you and for the honor you brought to the, our beloved university and for the increased value you brought to our being graduates of, being faculty or staff of, and being friends of the College of Natural Sciences during your more than 17 years. I'm sorry, it's less than 17. <coughs> you told us it. <coughs> uh, three years ago, at the Hall of Honor celebration for all past honorees, I was privileged to announce the Mary Ann Rankin Leadership Chair which many of you here tonight created through your generosity of a secret gift to honor our very, very surprised Dean. <clears throat> Some of you who are here will, will remember that. Most of you know that the endowed ranking chair provides our Dean and all future deans of the College of Natural Sciences extra income to respond quickly and decisively to sudden opportunities arising outside the usual budgetary cycle, allowing them to strengthen the quality of the college's faculty, its research programs, and its teaching of students, and to, con and to contribute to its international stature. The ranking chair will help the college do this in perpetuity. Marianne, I'm sorry we ran you off so soon after that announcement, but <laughs> But we're all now so proud to be able to call the new provost of the University of Maryland one of our own. I want you to know, Marianne, that your old office is in good hands. Linda Hickey is doing an excellent job and is making us proud, too. And her five-year strategic plan, which we'll all hear more about, <clears throat> will build further on your monumental transformation of this college. Tonight, I want to tell you something about the 2010 Ranking Chair campaign. First, the good news about the campaign itself. And I've worked on lots of fundraisers through the last 50 years for various arts and education campaigns. But what I want to say is that because of the esteem in which Mary Ann is held, and with the help and enthusiasm and the generosity of so many advisory council members and friends of Mary Ann, 
plus the facilitation of the campaign by Kay Thomas and her capable staff, raising money to honor Marianne was a piece of cake. Easiest thing I've ever done, <laughs> and it was fun. Marianne, <coughs> uh, the present good news about the, your chair is that uh, about $40,000 in new income is being generated from during this fiscal year from the chair, from the endowment, and it's doing what it was envisioned to do. One more thing, Marianne, with your indulgence, I'm going to ask your friends here tonight to take this opportunity to make an additional gift or a first gift to the Marianne Rankin Leadership Chair. The report of the Commission of 125 says the University of Texas will be the best in the world at creating a disciplined culture of excellence that generates intellectual excitement, transforms lives, and develops leaders. These are the very things you yourself did so well and the qualities that embodied your deanship. There are brochures and pledge cards on the registration tables here tonight, and those of you, and they, they, those will also be available tomorrow morning at the meeting. So all of you, please take one and continue to honor our good friend, Dr. Mary Ann Rankin, the 2013 College of Natural Sciences honoree. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim, for your continued support of, of the college. Um, if I could ask Glenn Rogers now to join me on stage to help me with a, a toast and then to make some final remarks. Actually, there's two glasses of champagne up here, so you can grab one of these, Glenn. So if you could all join us in a toast to Marianne Rankin, former dean of the College of Natural Sciences at UT Austin, current provost at the University of Maryland, and our newest member of the College of Natural Sciences Hall of Honor. Congratulations, Marianne. Wonderful. OK, now we'd like to hear a few remarks from Glenn. I have the mop up detail, so this is the, this is the final. Uh, Mary Ann, what an incredible privilege to be back and to have you here with us and to be our newest member. But as you know, as all these events come to an end, we have to do a little bit of detail about if you have your parking ticket and need to have it <laughs> checked, you can do that out front. And we'll be here tomorrow morning at 7.30 uh, to, to start our program. We have an exciting program and, and a lot of good things to, to look forward to. Uh, thank all of you for being here tonight. It's been a wonderful privilege. And now in tradition with what we've done in the past, I believe Don Carlton started it, but Linda, would you and Marianne please come forward and we're going to, in case you haven't forgotten, Marianne, the words to the eyes of Texas, which are still <laughs> upon you wherever you are. Thank all of you for coming. It's a wonderful evening, and as soon as we have the eyes, we'll, we'll leave. <laughs>